Hey, it's Jeff Givens here, and this is the second part of my intro to Cubase tutorials. So I'm going to get a little bit more into detail on some of the tools and other things, especially to do with MIDI and virtual instruments in Cubase. And if it sounds a little bit like there is a snoring child in the video, it's because I've got a snoring child in the studio. So without further ado, let's get into some of the complexities of MIDI on Cubase. I'll show you the drum editor and something called iterative quantize and some other features of the key editor that are just going to make your MIDI editing life a lot easier. So as we've seen in the last video, I played in this dark pad. So let me add another virtual instrument track by pressing I, which is my key command. So when you first open up Omnisphere, you just have to click anywhere on the logo and up pops this interface for the virtual instrument. And for Omnisphere, all you need to do is click on this little folder right here, not this top folder, but the middle folder, or click on the plus button to get to the patch browser. So some terminology with virtual instruments, a patch is just what we call uh, a preset or a sound in a virtual instrument. So it comes from the olden days of analog synthesizers where you would have actual patch cords creating sounds. So you'd have these little cables called patch cords and configurations of these patch cords would make a sound and the term patch just stuck. So we call them a patch and in Omnisphere you see that it's the patch browser. And so if you open up any virtual instrument, you're going to find some kind of patch browser. And so in Omnisphere's case, you can see over on the left, if we have the category set to all and all of this metadata is set to all, we're going to see all of the patches inside Omnisphere, which is thousands and thousands of patches. So it's kind of overwhelming. And so what they've done is they give you ways to thin things out. And every virtual instrument does this. I mentioned this in the last video. So if I just go over to pads and strings, I'm going to find on the right hand side only patches that are somehow a pad or a string sound, which is this kind of washy sound, which we've already got this dark pad. Let's just try one for fun. Let's try this ARP and BPM category, which is an arpeggiated patch, which will do, uh, which will cycle through notes for me or BPM, which is beats per minute. So it'll be some kind of rhythmic patch. So let's have a look. Let's try uh, some of the patches here. So once we find a patch that we like, and I turn the click on by pressing C, and I'll press uh, record and play, or play and then record. With rhythmic patches, you want these things to line up perfectly. So there's no shame in quantizing these notes. Just go, make sure you go in and quantize them or else the rhythm is going to be slightly off with the beats of your song. So you really want to fully quantize these kinds of notes. So I press Q and it quantizes all of the notes to the grid. And then I also, with these ryth rhythmic ones, I want them to go all the way to the end of each bar and then end perfectly at a bar. Because they're rhythmic, I don't want them to overlap slightly. So I can select all the notes and over in the inspector of the editor, we can see uh, some other information. And if you can't see it, it might look like this. Just do this little drop down, which shows the quantize settings. And what we can do right now is click quantize lengths. And it's going to quantize the lengths to whatever our quantize value is set at. And we can see that this little L right here, which stands for length quantize, we can have this one independent from the beginning of notes, uh, the regular quantize value, which is this value right here. But I like to leave it on quantize length so then I know exactly what my quantize values are for everything all the time. So in this case, I'm just going to set it to something like an eighth note or even a quarter note would work fine here because this isn't very complex or a very fast moving set of notes. So now I can hit quantize lengths and it quantizes the lengths of each of those notes. So they go perfectly from the beginning of the bar to the end of the bar. Okay, so that's just a little tip for working with rhythmic patches, whether it's Omnisphere or any other virtual instrument. Okay, so now I can resize this. I can turn the snap on. One of my students just called this the butterfly, and I kind of like that. I think from now on, I'm going to call this the butterfly. So we click the butterfly or the snap on or off, 
And now I can resize this and dr drag the ends of the part so that they end perfectly and begin perfectly at a bar. So now I can hold Option and drag this over. Don't forget that Option dragging is another way to create a copy. So I just hold Option, drag it over. Let me show you another thing about this Option control in Cubase. Whenever you're on the arrow tool, if you hold Option down, it turns into a pair of scissors. So I can click and cut with the Option tool and without actually changing tools. I can also click Option, and if I hover over nothing, instead of turning into scissors, it turns into a pencil. So now all I have to do is hold Option down, click and drag, and I can draw a, an empty chunk right on the screen as a pencil tool. So it saves me from going to the scissor tool or to the pencil or the draw tool. And this works inside the editor as well. So watch what happens if I have my arrow over nothing and I hold the Option tool down, I get a pencil and I can draw in a note. And if I hold Option and click over top of something, it turns into scissors. So if you're over top of something, it turns into scissors. If you're over top of nothing and you press Option, it turns into a pencil. So the arrow tool becomes kind of this three-in-one tool as long as you're holding down the Option key. And whether you're over something dictates whether it's scissors or if you're over nothing, it becomes the pencil. So a really quick way to just draw stuff in or to cut things or to resize things without actually changing the tool. Okay, so next I'm going to show you the drum editor. I didn't show this in the last video, but this is by far one of my favorite features of Cubase. And it's very simple. And you'd say, why is this so great? Well, it's because a lot of programs don't actually have a drum editor. And uh, Cubase's drum editor has been around forever. And it is great. It's just very simple. But instead of looking at something like this Tiger Kit as simple MIDI information against the key editor, which doesn't really help me. For one thing, it just shows me notes on the left-hand side. And with the drum editor, we can actually use a template to start from and name each one of our notes as bass drum and snare drum, hand clap, whatever that is. You know, you can rename each one of these sounds and see that in the editor. I'll show you that in a second. And then the, the most important thing to me is if you want to change the velocity of, say, this hi-hat hit right here, I have to go in and select the note, and then I can adjust the velocity in this information line. I can double click and type in 90. Don't forget that the values of velocity start at zero and go up to 127. So those are the, the amount, the possible states that you have in MIDI and in Cubase. So we have 128 possible states, 0 to 127. And if I want to change the velocity of just this note, it gets a little bit messy. I can, I can just click on it, and then now you can see that I'm just adjusting the velocity of that note right here and not adjusting the velocity of this note right here. But we'll see what the drum editor does for us in a second. So if I go over to my Tiger Kit track and I click on the left-hand side in the inspector, so I have to make sure I'm clicked on it, and I go over to the inspector, and right where it says no drum map, I'm gonna click there, I'm gonna get a drop-down menu that says GM map. What's gonna happen when I click on GM map is it's gonna load up a basic general MIDI drum map. General MIDI was something that was agreed upon probably back in the 80s and they sort of decided where a standard set of sounds would be. And so they said bass drum would be on the C, snare drum would be on the D, another snare drum would be on the E. They sometimes call that the, or they call that the electric snare, I think. And then it went on. We have toms, and then we had hi-hats, closed hi-hat, open hi-hat, etc. So they had this standard set of sounds. And what that does is when I double click on this now, this Tiger Kit, we can see I've got bass drum, side stick, hand clap, closed hi-hat, open hi-hat over here, right? So the thing you need to understand about this is it's not gonna necessarily line up with the drum sound that you're playing with. That depends on the manufacturer. We're working with, I think, a Groove Agent kit right now. I can click, this isn't the, doesn't look like a toaster, but it's the same button that is the toaster on the main page. So if I click this, I can see what virtual instrument I'm using. I'm using Groove Agent right now. And so we can see that this isn't a side stick. That's a kick drum, right? So it says side stick, so we can just call this kick 
because that's kind of what it is. You don't even have to rename these if you don't want to. I don't. I often just leave it, and I will know that this is the kick drum and the snare drum. But if it helps you, then go for it. So this is kind of a clap. And if we see, if I use the pen, drumstick tool here, not the pencil, but the drumstick tool, I click there, and sure enough, that's a snare drum as well. So I can use the drumstick tool to get rid of notes also. So I can just click and get rid of them, enter them and delete them with the same tool. Okay, so a hand clap is fine. This here, if I click over on the left hand side of the drum editor, you can hear the sound that you're clicking on. So there I can hear the bass drum, here I can hear the hi-hat and so on. So that's the way to, to hear the note, is just to click on the far left hand side of the drum editor. And the great thing about this is if you click on the, the closed hi-hat track, I can see all the closed hi-hat notes that are in my little beat here. And then I can see just the velocity for those notes. And the thing that makes this easier is now I can just go in and I can adjust the velocities of just the hi-hats. I don't have to go and select the notes like I would have had to do in the key editor. And I can go through and I can adjust the velocities of every other hit or something like that, right? So now I can have this beat that has some more variation in the hi-hat part. Okay, so let's just try drawing a drum beat in from scratch. I am going to uh, just move this tiger kit over and I'll show you how you could enter in a drum beat from scratch. One thing I always tell my students is entering in a basic rock and roll drum beat is probably a great place to start, especially if you're recording yourself or some other musician on acoustic instruments that has never played to a click track before. That can be a really awkward thing for people playing to this beeping thing and unless you practice to the metronome like your piano teacher told you to, it's going to be kind of awkward. So what I suggest is that they start with a simple rock and roll drum beat. And the most basic drum beat you could have would be kick drum on one and three and snare drum on two and four. And then you could put hi-hats in at sixteenth notes or at eighth notes or at quarter notes. And that would give you a really basic drum beat to play to. So let's just punch that in in the drum editor. And I can do that once I've got my drum, my GM map turned on. If I hold Option and click and drag, I create my little chunk. I double click on that and then now I open up the editor. And I've got my locator flags on the left and the right of one bar so that it'll just cycle between those two, those two locators. And then I can start entering it in my drum beat. So let's go on my kick number two. I'm going to put a drum, kick drum in on one and three, and then a snare drum or a hand clap on two and four. And so then I can go to my closed hi-hat and set it to eighth notes and drag this across. So what I need to do is go to my quantize setting and set this to eighth notes. And I also need to make sure that my grid type is set to use quantize. And then now I can hold option and just drag along the closed hi-hat to enter in my very simple hi-hat part. So let's have a listen to this. Okay, let's try adding in a closed hi-hat or an open hi-hat, maybe on the last eighth note. we go. Let's try making this more interesting. Let's put the quantize or the grid, let's put the grid to 16th notes and start adding some bass drum, maybe a 16th note before this snare. And then maybe you could even try a 16th note after a snare. Let's see what that sounds like. Okay, let's put some more kick drum in, maybe right there. Let's try getting rid of this kick drum that's actually on three. Play, play around with it a bit. Let's get rid of that one and try doing a couple bass drums just after this beat. And then let's put this one back here and try something like this. I kind of 
like this, right there. That's kind of fun. Let's try making the hi-hat a little bit more complicated and let's put in some hi-hats on 16th notes. And then what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the velocities of just every other hi-hat note. Something like that. I'll show you a trick where we can do that a little easier in a second. And what I can do here is I can solo the drum editor from the rest of the song by pressing the S in the editor. And then I can also click this button right here, which solos just the closed hi-hat. Another thing you can't do in the key editor. So another reason to use the drum editor. Let's turn the click off and let's adjust these velocities even more. Now here's another cool trick. Let me go back to adjusting the velocities and I'm going to select every other note here. All right, watch what we can do within the key editor. I can mouse over this velocity lane down below. I get this little square that pops up right here at the bottom. Let me zoom in. So this little square right here, all I have to do is click and drag down and now all of those velocities go down and I can adjust them as it's playing to get just in the right spot without having to select each one of them again. Or maybe I want them louder. Or watch what I can do as well. I can bring this up and then I can click over on the left hand side of this selection, you'll see another dot and watch what happens. I can grab that and I can do a little ramp of these notes. Of course, that would be useful if you had everything selected. Let's take it back to something like this. And what if we wanted all of these hi-hat notes to ramp in a little bit more? I could grab all of them now and you see how that works? It kind of scales the notes down keeps everything relative and then now has this nice ramp of the velocities. This is another one of my favorite features of editing with Cubase and this is stuff that you don't find in a lot of other programs as well. So these kind of functions make editing MIDI in Cubase so easy and is one of the main reasons I continue to use this program. Uh, let's have a listen to that. Let's take off the solo of the single instrument, which is the closed hi-hat because it's selected. Here are all the drums. And let's add maybe some other instruments in there. Let's try this. I don't think it's a tom. That's kind of a neat click. Let's put that in every other one. That's pretty cool. Let's try another instrument. Let's just click on one. And then now with that one selected, if I draw a box around it, I can just arrow down on my, on my keyboard and try out some of these other sounds. Ooh, let's put a little tambourine hit every once in a while. Yeah, I like it on the off beats kind of like that. Let's do that. Okay, it's a fun little drum beat. Now what I like to do is select that little drum beat, copy it over with Command D, or I could just drag it out. I right click to get my glue tool, and I can select all of them with the glue tool, and then just click on the first one, and that glues all of them together. Now I, I right click on my mouse just to get back to the arrow tool, double click on that, and now I can see this four bar phrase of drums that I've made. And then maybe what I do here is add a little bit of variation in this drum beat. So let's have a listen. Let's maybe add a little snare fill right here. And then maybe something else. Isn't a lot of toms in here, so it's kind of a uh, non-traditional drum kit, but
let's go like this. Go clap. And then let's maybe make this a little more intense. Let's try something like that. And then let's add a little crash symbol or something. So I'm going to arrow down till I find something and actually it lines up with the crash symbol. So here we go. Skip ahead. So there's a fun little drum beat. Let's go with that. Have a listen to it in the context of the song. Okay, that's pretty sweet. Let's get rid of the old drum beat or move it over. I'm going to duplicate this whole thing and duplicate this drum beat as well. And now let's make a new track and I'm just going to show you one more thing. We'll go to, um, let's go to prologue and I'll hit add track. And with the prologue, I'm looking for a bass sound. So again, I click in this black empty slot right here and I go to where I find synth bass and then I start clicking on patches and seeing what they sound like. So we'll try this tribal bass patch. I've gone through and just found a decent one. Okay, so I played a couple things in there. I'm going to press shift star to get the recording back up. That's called retrospective record. So let's double click on that and we can see the notes that I played. And now this one has, I gave it a little bit of a swing when I was playing and I don't want to quantize the notes exactly because that will get rid of some of the feel of what I've done. And so, but instead of leaving it unquantized, what I can do is do something called iterative quantize. And iterative quantize has changed in the latest version. And in order to turn iterative quantize on, we go to this little thing right here, click on that little button in the quantize menu. Now that I've done that, when I press Q, it's going to quantize everything a percentage closer. So watch what happens when I press Q. You see this note is slightly off, this note is barely off, and this note is off by a larger amount. Watch what happens to them. Each of them gets moved 50% closer. So this one almost looks perfect. This one is still slightly off and this one is still off slightly, but uh, is much closer than it was before. Let me undo that. Let's see it again. Uh, redo, undo, and redo. So if I press Q again, it's going to do another 50% quantize to get things 50% closer. So in theory, you'd never actually get there, but I'm sure that's not if you kept pressing Q, but I'm sure that's not the case. If I press this E button right here, open quantize panel, you can see what the iterative quantize setting is set at. So I said 50, but it was actually 60%. So it was moving the notes 60% closer. doesn't really matter. I usually leave that at 50%. And uh, so that way I know that I'm quantizing things 50% closer to where they should be. And it's just a nice way to keep the human feel of these notes that were played, but it tidies things up just a little bit. So sometimes I will just iterative quantize sections. So if I like something, but I get to a spot that's a little sloppy, just select those notes, press Q. And as long as this button is on right here, you're going to iterative quantize only those notes. So, so I think that's probably good for this tutorial. I will get into some other complexities in future videos and I'll go over audio recording and effects and things like that. So thanks for watching and make sure you go to gibbonscreative.ca to see what else we do and hit that subscribe button.